Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. Welcome back to another Sunday Sew Along. Today is part two of our Vogue 1650 um, trench coat that we are making. Um, okay, so this Sew Along so far, I, um, I've been learning a couple of things. Number one, I think it might be important for me to be filming Sew Alongs in advance. So before I even release the first video, I have sewn the whole thing, filmed the whole thing, and that is a goal of mine for 2021, <laughs> is to get to a point where I'm ahead of the sew alongs so that when they do release, um, number one, I had a lot of people saying that they liked being able to see in the blouse sew along just because I had made it for the one pattern three ways as well that you were able to see the blouse before the sew along even started and they kind of, they liked that. So I do think that that's good um, going forward with the next one maybe obviously then having the whole sew along film so that you can see the dress at the beginning. Um, <laughs> because yes, this has been fraught with all sorts of things. So number one, last week we talked about uh, supplies and that sort of thing and nothing has really changed other than the main fabric and the lining. So I stuck with, um, okay, so I, and I'd mentioned that I was really hopeful that um, I would have enough. And in all honesty, the fabric that I had, um, that red cotton twill, will probably become a trench coat, a short one. Um, I think that this is, and as I'm working through this, this is turning into a really, I think I'm really going to like this trench coat when it's at, when it's over, which is going to be good. I think it's going to be worth it. But um, I think it's a longer one. This is like a midi length trench coat. I think I would like one above the knee. I think that would be cute. Um, there's a few patterns. Um, I really want Cashmere to release their Chilton trench coat in their new size range. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe sometime soon, but um, I would love to sew that one up. But anyway, I'm going to hang on to that fabric and hopefully enough of that uh, fabric for the lining. Um, I think I could probably make my top out of it now and then use the rest for lining for a future shorter trench coat, but I just did not have enough for this. Um, and I could mention this pattern is such a beast. It took forever to cut out all the pieces and interface them. And so the, today's video is all about cutting out. Um, I'm doing a whole bunch of tips and tricks and that sort of thing. So we're not sewing quite yet. That starts next week. Um, but I, um, number one, I have a new microphone. I got a new microphone for my camera and it fits on my um, camera and also my phone. So hopefully there'll be more consistency. Um, anytime you see me, the overhead shots, um, my tripod that I've got, my stand that I, tripod that I use for that, I put my phone in just because it's lighter and I can um, adjust it downward easy, easier. Um, and so hopefully having the microphone has made the more consistency with the volume. That's my hope. <laughs> um, it did cause some issues for next week so long, but we'll talk about that next week. Anyway, um, today we're doing all the cutting out. So I just want to talk about the differences in the materials really quickly. So um, I actually, um, because I didn't have enough and because I am kind of... Um, just my timeline, running my timeline a little quicker than, uh, a little closer than I would like. March really kicked my rear end, to be honest. <laughs> we had a lot going on personally. So anyway, I have uh, went to Joann's and got this cotton twill, and I would call it like, um, it's not as heavy as the previous cotton twill that I had used, but um, I mean, it's it going to be great for a jacket. Like this is a good bottom weight. Like you can make a good pair of pants, and it has a little bit of stretch. If you can see my kind of pulling that a little bit. So um, it's cotton with a little bit of spandex in it or elastane, whatever you wanna talk about. This is one of the sleeves. Um, but I think this is also going to solve my issue with my sleeves, because I just couldn't figure out a good way to do the full bicep adjustment. Although many people suggested, you know, could you pick a larger sleeve and then just adjust the arm's eye with, to go with the larger sleeve in your, um, with the smaller pattern. And you could, you could totally do that. Um, I just, my, the size, the pattern that I have is the smaller size range and I make the largest size in that a medium. So I don't own the pattern, the larger pattern sizes for the sleeves, unfortunately, but that could work. You could totally Franken pattern it that way. But I think that this might help with that issue because everything is going to have a little bit of give. Now, because this is a lined coat, I also needed some lining and, um, sorry, this is still with its pattern piece here. And I also bought this at Joann's. This is a, I would, they call it polyester chiffon online, but this is not a chiffon. 
I would call this a polyester peach skin. But look at that beautiful pattern. It just, it's beautiful, but it's a polyester and it also has some spandex in it. So I think that this is gonna give me just the amount of give I need for this all to, um, to really fit and be able to move really easily in. So I think that this is gonna actually work out probably better. Um, but yes, both these fabrics came from Joann's, so I've linked these down below. They're both still available. Uh, and because I went with the polyester, uh, which I will do on occasion for um, linings because it does hold up really well, and it's usually sli slippery. So I would call this like a peach skin. Like it has a little bit of a, of a brushed um, feel to it, but it's still slick enough that I could, I could do the sleeves in it. And I think it's gonna go over sweaters and everything really easily. So I did all of the lining in this. Um, with the, there's a couple of exceptions that I didn't want the light colored peeking out on the, um, um, the shield, you know, the little piece that comes over and then the back shield. So, but I talk about that here in just a minute in the video. So there you have it. We've had to make some adjustments. This is turning into a project where we're just kind of going with the punches, trying some new things, <laughs> figuring some stuff out. And I was talking to my sister and she said, wow, the end of this is either going to be, um, just a big bungle up, or this is gonna be an amazing sew along. <laughs> I was like, let's hope for that one. Let's hope for that one, that it's just gonna, I'm gonna learn a lot, and there's just gonna be, um, you know, it's gonna be a very well received, really good sew along. So, fingers crossed, that's the end. I tell ya, I am not really sure what the Lord is trying to tell me right now that I'm clearly not hearing um, because he's having to tell me a few times. Um, but yeah, it has been a really interesting past couple of weeks. Um, it is, yeah, nothing has been easy. <laughs> everything, everything, yes, we're just, you know, grin and bear it, uh, go along with a little bit of a laugh and um, yeah, hopefully learn some lessons as we go. So. That is my, I'm putting that out there for accountability, but hopefully going forward, sorry, I need to keep all of my pattern pieces together because there's 800 pattern pieces for this pattern. So if anything gets separated, it's gonna get really confusing later. Um, but yes, hopefully going forward, my goal is to start doing these sew alongs well in advance so that by the time you see the first video, I have already finished filming everything and already finished making the garments. So that's just gonna require some advanced planning on my end. So picking out, you know, having to plan out probably sew alongs for the year um, at the beginning of the year. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. <laughs> to make life, you know, a little organization makes everything easier. Okay, so I'm gonna send you over to the cutting table. We're gonna cut all of these pieces out and do hang with me, even if you're not sewing along right now. I really think this is gonna be a really phenomenal trench coat. And because of this, because it's a designer pattern, I think the details on it are just gonna be really special. So I do think um, for as much as I've sewn so far that it is gonna be a really, a really good one, so. <laughs> All right, guys, that's all I have for today. I will see you all on Tuesday again in the next week for another so long. Hope you guys are having a good weekend. Bye. Okay, so we're going to go through our interfacing here real quickly. Um, this is such a beast of a pattern. Um, you're also going to notice that my fabric has changed, as has my lining, because I did not, in fact, have enough of the red. Um, had plenty of lining, but um, I had to go find a new fabric, and then I bought matching lining to go with it. Um, it's going to be great. So... <laughs> You'll see that in a minute, but let's go through. Um, I've already pulled out my lining only pieces. So those are in a separate pile. So we're not gonna worry about those right now. But I wanted to talk about fabric and interfacing really quickly. So um, all of our body pieces of the coat all say, and there's a lot of them because it's, you know, right front, left front, yada, yada, yada. All of them say, you know, cut one fabric, cut one interfacing. This is piece number one. Now, at first I was like, geez, we have to interface the whole front of the coat, but after looking into it more, no, it's saying cut one interfacing, but it's meaning the interfacing because it says down here, interface to this line. So we're not interfacing the entire front piece, we're just interfacing up to this line. So what I'm going to do and the order I'm going to do it is I'm gonna go through and I'm going to trace off interfacing pieces. So I'm just going to put a piece of tracing paper and trace off, you know, from this line down, down and around, mark them all. You know, this is whatever this is, right front piece. And do that for all of the body pieces um, and the sleeve. So this is piece one, 
Keep them out in order. One, two. Um, I don't know about piece three. I don't know what piece three is, but this is one, two, four, five. Uh, you're not going to count. And 14. So that's our left front. Oh, I bet the three is probably the small piece here. Um, so basically it's your left front, your right front, left back, right back, your sleeve. Yes. And three. So sorry, here's three. Three is this side front, this little piece here. All of those, um, I'm just going to make interfacing only pieces. Uh, it'll just be easier and I'll show you. I mean, it's just easier to cut out that way, obviously. Also for our back pieces that have our vent, sorry, the paper is very crinkly. You also need, so when I'm tracing out, for instance, here's piece five, I'm going to trace out a piece for interfacing that is just this and then up to this point. So it'll be an odd shaped piece, but I'm gonna do one piece that just goes up and around the corner on both my left front and my right front backs. Okay, so those pieces, I'm gonna draft a separate interfacing piece just to make it easier. Now, the other body pieces here, a lot of these require interfacing and you're interfacing the whole piece, such as your front facing. Um, oddly enough, the belt, I don't think I'm gonna, I don't think I'm gonna interface my belt to be honest, just because I don't want it to be that structured. I feel like the, um, the way she has it tied kind of stands away from her body, which is what it would do if it were interfaced. Um, I don't think I want mine that rigid. So I may play a, around with it, but I think for right now, I'm not gonna interface the belt. That may change, but for now, I'm not gonna interface the belt. But then we have this piece here, which is your extension. And I'm really not sure what that means, your extension. We'll have to look into that. But anyway, it wants you to cut out two in the fabric and also two in the interfacing. Um, the same with the collar pieces. You both need them out of fabric, one out of fabric and one out of interfacing. Um, not your carriers, not your sleeve tab. Your back neck facing is cut one and also at interfacing and then your shields are not. And then your collar band is cut two out of fabric and then one out of interfacing. Now, for these pieces and my front facing, I'm actually going to do some block fusing. I think it'll just be easier. So I'm basically gonna be interfacing um, a section of fabric and then I'll cut these pieces out. I just think it'll be a little more efficient and a little easier. I won't be doing that with the body pieces because we're only interfacing the hems. So that's why they'll have their separate. And then these pieces of the body um, are just out of fabric. There is, you know, well, for instance, this, you're cutting it out of the fabric and the lining and the same with the other front shield piece. So, and actually I may not do mine out of the lining just because I'm using a very light colored lining for my darker jacket. So I may just find something in my stash that's lighter weight. Actually even self fabric might be okay for those. Anyway, we'll come to that in a second. <laughs> um, so that's what I'm going to do. So. First things, and the order I'm gonna do things, is I'm going to trace off, I'm only focusing on my body pieces. So this is pieces one through five, um, which is my left front, right front, the side front pieces, that we, you cut two of those, and then left back, right back. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and cut, trace off their interfacing pieces on their hems and cut them out first before I cut out my main fabric because I think because these pieces are so unwieldy, it's just gonna be easier, you know, once I've cut out my left back, I can take it over to the iron and go ahead and fuse the interfacing to the back um, and then set it aside, especially because we're just cutting one of each of these, um, everything except for the side front and the sleeve actually. Oh yeah, your sleeve's included in there too, which is piece uh, 14. Okay, so I'm gonna set all of these smaller pieces to the side for now. So I'm just going to, again, pull out my interfacing and I'm just gonna cut out my hem interface pieces 
out of the interfacing. <laughs> so I will be back in just a second and um, we'll cut out a piece out of the fashion fabric and I'll show you what I mean. But yeah, go ahead, trace off your hem interfacing pieces and cut those out of interfacing and then I'll meet you back here. Okay, so I have traced out the bottom portions of pieces one, two, three, four, five, and 14. So that's right front, left front, uh, right back, left back, the side front, and the sleeve. So there should be six separate pieces. Now, all of these are cut one because it's obviously a separate piece for the left and the right. So we have to be very careful when cutting out because we need our fabric facing up the correct way. So I like to cut my fashion fabric with the right sides up. Even if I'm cu cutting double, I like to cut um, with the right sides out. So I put my wrong sides together. Not all people do that. Some people do it the opposite way. So that's gonna be key. You need to decide if you're cutting with right side up or wrong side up. I just always do right side up because this is a cotton twill. There is definitely gonna be a right and a wrong side to this fabric. Um, and we just need to keep that straight. Otherwise you're going to have things flip-flopped and that kind of stuff. And you need your interfacing to be the same orientation as well so that things fuse correctly to the right side, uh, the correct side, sorry. So since I'm going to be cutting my fashion fabric right side up, so all my pieces will be laying right side up. And I think that's the orientation of the pieces. So if my pieces are right side up and I'm putting them on the fabric right side up, I think that's correct. Yes, that should be right. Yes. <laughs> so because of that, and I'm only cutting out one piece of, except for the sleeve, the sleeve you're cutting out two of, um, but everything else you're just cutting out one of. I want my interfacing to be glue side up. Okay, so my pattern pieces are right side up and my uh, interfacing is glue side up. So now I'm just going to cut out one and these, you know, these back pieces with the vent, they can get a little unwieldy. But what I'm going to do is cut one of each of these out, except the sleeve. The sleeve gets two cut out, so I'll fold up my interfacing for that one. So I'm going to cut one of each of these out and then um, I'm going to come back through Oh, I take that back. Your side front also gets two cut out, so we'll cut those out separately. So these are the only ones that get cut out one. So you have four of the pieces that just get cut out once. So I'm gonna cut these out, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back with my pinking shears, and I'm gonna pink anything that's gonna be inside the body of the coat. So on the pieces with the um, vent, it will be you know this top line and then this inside line. On these pieces where it's just the bottom, I'll just be pinking the top because that's gonna be the piece. I mean, these all go to the ends of you know raw edges, but this will be inside the body of the coat and the pinking just makes that a softer line so it's not so harsh. You know, you can't see the line where the interfacing stops once it's fused to the inside of your coat. So um, yeah, so that's what I'm gonna do. Cut these out and then I'll fold my interfacing onto itself to cut out these other two pieces, and these will get pinked along the top as well. I'm just cutting out two of these instead of just one, so they can be a little more, a little easy. Okay, so I'm going to do that and um, get everything pinked, and then once all these pieces and then two of each of my side front and my sleeve, once I've cut all of that out, I'm going to be laying my fabric one layer, because we're gonna do all the one layer stuff first, and, um, and then, you know, like the sleeves and the side front we'll double it up to do. But I'm gonna lay out my fabric right side up in one layer, and I'll meet you back here when we've got that done. Okay, so I have all of my um, hem interfacing pieces here. Now, one thing I'm gonna say, make sure that you keep your interface pieces with your pattern pieces, pin them, whatever because it's gonna get really confusing because a lot of them are almost rectangular shaped on which side is which and yada, yada, yada. Now obviously my sleeve and then my side front, um, they're mirrors, so you can kind of figure that out as you go. But I've gone ahead and hopefully you can see where I've pinked those edges so that will make a nice line. Um, but definitely these pieces where we just have one, 
you want to keep those with their pattern pieces so that you know which ones go with which um, main body pieces. Okay, so the way I'm going to do this, I have plenty of fabric. This pattern called for four yards and let's see, four and five eighths of a yard, I think, for 60 inch wide fabric. I think my fabric is like 54 inches wide. Um, but I'm going to, I got five yards of it just because I didn't want to have a repeat. So I am just going to, obviously, if I was a little more concerned about my fabric, I would um, lay everything out and make sure I have enough space. Um, but I'm just not as concerned. So what I'm going to do, I have my fabric facing right side up. Making sure, yep, that is right side up. Um, this fabric is from Joann's. It is a cotton twill with a little bit of spandex in it. And my lining fabric that I've decided to go with is a polyester. Um, it's It was in like their, um, what is it, silky fabrics or whatever. It's a polyester. It's got a little spandex in it as well. Um, I would never wear it for clothing just because I hate wearing, I don't like wearing polyester against my skin unless it's like athletic wear for that purpose. Um, but it's going to make a great coat lighting because it'll be nice and slippery and it's a slippery -er, uh type of fabric. So I'm able to even do my sleeves with it, but fabric is facing up, pattern piece is facing up, and I'm going to be doing everything that is just one right now. So I'm only focusing right now on pieces one, two, three, four, and five, and then the sleeve, which is piece 14, I think, um, pieces three, which is the side front and the sleeve, I will be doubling the fabric up to cut those out because I have to cut out two. But I have a nice fresh blade in my rotary cutter. I use, um, I'm going through this a little bit more. I've just had requests for this. And um, these pieces are just so long and I've, I've shortened mine by three inches. They are just so long and unwieldy that, yeah, I think it's just going to be easier to do these one piece at a time and just kind of go slow, which is also why this video, we're not doing any sewing because there's just so much prep work. It's a big pattern. All right. So then I'm just going to go and um, cut out fresh blade, which makes cutting things out so much easier especially fabrics with uh, spandex, because I find that those sometimes are a little harder to cut. You just sometimes have to go back over a couple of times. And I appreciate that some of this is out of frame. But again, we are working with some very large pieces. And this one is piece four, which is my right back. So this is the process that I'm going to take with all of these main body pieces. All right. Okay, so once I have cut that out, I am going to go through and do my notches. So there are center back notches here, right in the way of the, see even my scissors, I notice they don't like cutting through the spandex as well. <clears throat> okay, now I have a spot, um, I think you can see, that is that I need to mark right here for my stitching for that vent, but my um, um, interfacing is going to go there. So I'm going to wait and mark those after I have my interfacing fused. I'm going to mark my shoulder and my armhole. And I think we'll mark the side here too. Um, also we have markings on here and we can go ahead and do a lot of this. Uh, this is the belt carrier. One is, it says carrier here. So um, I am going to mark this. <clears throat> Which is kind of nice. Just go ahead and get that done. And again, my right side is up. So just going to pull everything to the back here. Mark that. 
Okay, now before I cut anything else out, I'm going to take this over to the ironing board and I'm going to fuse my interfacing to the wrong side and everything should line up just fine because we've cut things out properly. So this is my right back. So I'm looking for my right back piece. Which is right here. So here is piece for my right back, um, which should fit perfectly on the back side of this, okay? So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna cut everything out, one layer, right side of the fabric up, and fuse this. And once I have done those, well, I say six pieces, there's six pattern pieces, but actually it'll be um, four, five, six, seven, eight, because you're cutting out two sleeves and two um, side fronts. So once I have done all of those, I'll meet you back over here and then we'll talk about the next step. Okay, so I just wanna really quickly go over, um, so we have cut out and interfaced pieces one, two, three, four, five, and 14. So that is the left front, right front, side fronts. There's two of those, um, left back, right back, and then the two sleeves. And I, you can see here, I've done, I've put my interfacing in and you can see the pinked edge here, but I wanted to talk a little bit about the sleeve just really quickly. Um, I have marked in my stitching lines for this dart here at the top of the sleeve. And the way I did that was I took my um, serrated, well, it's not really serrated, I guess kind of, my pointy tracing wheel. And while the pattern piece was on top of it and they were stacked on top of each other, these are both wrong side facing up at the moment, but while they were, together. Um, I then took my tracing rate wheel and just pressed and traced that stitching line that's on the pattern. And then while I could still see it, um, it showed up really, really easily on this cotton twill, but I was afraid it would disappear. Then I went back with my um, friction pen and marked it in. So I'll be able to follow that when it's time to make the sleeve. So I just wanted to point that out as a really quick and easy way to um, um, mark that line because I think that's going to be important and you can see you can see my dots kind of but I'm afraid that that will eventually um, fade before I'm ready to sew it even so went ahead and marked those in on the wrong side with my pen so that can go away now go into my ready to be sewn pile all right next I'm going to cut out the pieces that do not need interfacing <laughs> So that's going to be piece nine, which is the back shield. You cut one on the fold. Piece 10, which is the front shield, you just cut out one. These also get lining cut out of them, so they'll go into a separate pile. Um, and I'll talk about lining here in just a minute. Um, my belt pieces, again, I'm not gonna interface my belt. I think my fabric is thick enough and I really don't want it to be too stiff. So, and it's a tie belt, so I'm, yeah. I might actually put a buckle on it. We'll see. But yeah, I think I'm not going to interface it. If I decide to change my mind, that's a pretty easy thing just to cut out and I'll just fuse it at that point. So I've got my um, belt that I'm going to cut out. And then the carrier, I cut out four of these. There's no interfacing. Now, piece, things are floating away. 15, which is the sleeve tab. We're going to cut two of those and that's it. No interfacing. And then piece 13 is actually the collar band for the collar of this. And it asks you to cut out two of fabric and one of interfacing. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut out one now while I'm cutting out things that aren't block fused. And then I'll put this in a pile to also cut out once we've fused interfacing. So it will go into the pile with the rest of the pieces here in a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to go and I'm gonna cut all of these out and I'm gonna mark them all. And then um, pieces nine and 10 are gonna go into the lining pile and piece 13 will go into the interfaced pile. So um, yeah, I'm gonna do that real quick and then I will be back and we will talk about block fusing.
Okay, I hope you can see okay. So now I have taken and folded over a piece of fabric and laid out all of my pieces that need to be interfaced and just made sure I have enough. So like my, this is folded over right here. So this is my front facing that's here because obviously I need two. I just need one of these that should fit. One of these on the bias, one of the, um, which is the under collar and upper collar, one of the back neck facings, got that good. Um, and then I've got my, um, uh, band piece. So I've got one band color band piece that's already cut out. It does not get interfaced. Set it aside. Don't let that accidentally get thrown away thinking it's a scrap. Um, so this will fit here on the interface piece. Obviously the piece underneath here should be good. I need two of these extensions that fits on there. So this piece of fabric fits all of the remainder of the body of my coat that I need. So I'm just going to block fuse interfacing. And what that means, this aside, is that I am going to, um, this is the right side, so on the back side of my fabric, I'm gonna cut out a piece of interfacing that um, is roughly the same size as this piece of fabric. And I am going to interface the entire piece of fabric. It'll just make cutting out so much easier. And I know you think, oh, but I'm getting so much waste of interfacing if I do it that way. But you're still, I mean, you're cutting out your interfacing from a slab of fabric just like you're doing this. So um, you still have pieces you throw away of your interfacing anyway, little scrap pieces. So I am just going to pull out, and this is the other bonus of using the Palmer Pletch interfacing. It's really wide, it's 60 inches wide. So I can get just one big piece um, obviously this is an odd shape, so, <laughs> but this is what's left over. Um, so yeah, I'll do a little bit of piecing. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to lay out some interfacing on top of this, roughly cut it out, and then go fuse it all um, on the iron with the ironing board and the iron, and then I will come back and cut those pieces out. Stay tuned. Okay, so I have block fused this piece of fabric. Um, to be honest, I'm not 100% certain that the pieces are like really fused well together. So what I'm gonna do is cut out my pieces and then once the pieces are cut out, I'll go and really make sure that the, I was just getting impatient to be honest. But <laughs> just go through and make sure that each piece is really fused. So I'll go and do my iron um, and just let it sit. This way though, you don't, I mean, you shouldn't have to make it sit very long, but also you should, um, I mean, everything should line up really well, especially weird, the weirder shaped pieces where you could get some distortion, especially the facing. And again, this is such an unwieldy, there's so many pattern pieces in here that are so unwieldy. Um, okay. So I'm just going to now set these out, cut these pieces out, and, um, and then we're ready for the lining. So I'm gonna do this, fuse it again, just a, a last minute, making sure everything is really nice and secure to the back, that the glue is nice and um, done its part. And then we will we'll come back here for the lining. This is taking so long. <laughs> okay, we are so close, folks. And as a reference for time, now I have been filming and talking as I've been doing this, but it is taking me over three hours to cut everything out. So. <laughs> This is a large project. Take it in small chunks. And uh, yeah, same way you eat an elephant, you know, one bite at a time, same thing. Okay, this is my lining fabric. Isn't it beautiful? It is, I would call it a polyester peach skin is really kind of what it feels like. Um, it does have some stretch to it. So there is some spandex in it, a little percentage of spandex. This is designed exclusively for Joanne according to the selvage. Um, I think the print is just lovely. This is directional. My flowers are going up, so I do want to pay attention to that. Um, but the pieces we're going to be cutting out are, and I also um, want to point out that this is going to be slippery enough to do the sleeves. So I know that um, the previous fabric that I was going to do is a rayon chalet, and that would not have been slippery enough for the sleeves. But this polyester peach skin will be slippery enough. Okay, so, um, oh, I have this folded in on itself, but everything is single layer again. So we have our right back lining, obviously, that will be um, cut just one. 
And then we have our left back lining that will also be cut just one. Our front lining, which gets cut two, so I'll cut this out first, I guess. <laughs> our pocket lining that will get cut two. And then our sleeve lining that will get cut two of those. Um, also, you need lining for, it's gonna back your, both your front shield and your back shield that we cut out of um, fashion fabric. Now, because this is white, obviously, now it's a very opaque white, I'm very pleased with that. I think it's gonna be great for a lining. I don't want any of that peeking out. Once we've sewn things together, I haven't looked at the instructions real close, but once we've sewn things together right side and then turned it in on itself, I don't want any of this white peeking out. Um, so what I'm going to do, instead of using the lining fabric for that, I have some of this rayon Batiste um, in my stash, a little scrap here. But it is, and it's not an exact match because here's our, I mean, obviously there's a difference there. But I would rather have this color kind of peeking out. And this is, it's called rayon Batiste, but I would call it like a lightweight sh rayon chalet. Um, so it will be similar in weight but then you don't run the risk of, if a little bit peeks out, it's not that big of a deal. And so I'll be doing that for both my front shield and my back shield. And if I have enough of this, I may go ahead and cut my pocket pieces out of it too, just in case, you know, if my hands are in my pocket or whatever, it's not like, whoa, white, um, that flashes. So we'll see how much I have of this uh, green. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna cut out one left back, one right back, two fronts, two sleeves, one front shield, one back shield on the fold, two pockets because the other two pockets are grown on on the, the front. And that is everything for the lining. Whew. So then we will start sewing next week. Um, yeah, leave any questions you have down below and I promise we will start sewing next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>